In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this modern interactive card grid in Figma. So let's begin. First, let's analyze how it works. Here, as you can see, we have four different cards and the way it works is like this. When I hover over each card, that card should grow vertically and the card underneath or above it should collapse, just like what we see here. So if I hover over this top card, the bottom card should collapse and this card should grow. And if I hover over the bottom card, the bottom card should grow and the top card should shrink. So let's see how you should create it. First of all, we need to create that card frame. So I'm going to hit A on my keyboard to select the frame tool and I'm going to just draw a frame. Then I'm going to set the width and height to 400 pixels. And also I'm going to make it rounded. So I'm going to increase the corner radius to 24 and I can change its color to purple. Something like this. All right, cool. Now inside we need to have a title and a description. So I'm going to hit T on my keyboard to select the text tool and just create a text layer. And here I'm going to start typing services. And I'm going to increase the font size to 24 and I'm going to make it bold just like this. And right underneath, we are going to have a description. So I'm going to duplicate it, hit Ctrl D or Command D, bring it down. I'm going to paste the text that I already copied. I'm going to paste it right there. And I'm going to decrease its width just like this. Okay, cool. The font size of the description could be 14 and the weight could be medium. I can also change its color. I'm going to create a very light tint of the background color. All right, now I'm going to select these two text layers and I'm going to add auto layout to them because I want to make sure that this card is fully responsive. So we need to use auto layout for everything. I'm going to hit shift and A to add auto layout to this. Here, the spacing between these two elements should be eight. That's fine. Now we need to select this main frame. All right, I can just rename it to card and we are going to add auto layout to it as well. So I'm going to hit shift and A and as soon as I do that, it tries to hide the content inside. That's because of these resizing options. So once again, I'm going to change the resizing options here to fixed width and fixed height. And I'm going to set the width and height to 400. Just like this. Next, we need to select the frame inside this one. Uh, I can just rename it to text. And I'm going to change the horizontal resizing option to fill container so that it takes up the whole available width within this parent frame, which is this card. And we should make sure to select these two texts and also change the resizing option to fill container. All right, so far so good. Now I'm going to select the card and I'm going to change its padding, the horizontal and the vertical padding to 32. And we also need to put an illustration right here. You can use a background image or whatever illustration you want. Here I'm just going to place a simple illustration and later on I can just replace it with another illustration based on my needs. There it is. Here is my illustration and I just placed it inside the main card frame. But here is the problem. Since I'm using auto layout, I cannot freely move it around. So what should I do? Well, we can easily fix this issue by clicking on this option, the absolute position option right here. As soon as I do that, this illustration will no longer be part of the flow. So I can easily move it around. So I'm going to place it right here. I can even scale it up. I'm going to hit K on my keyboard to select the scale tool and just scale it a little bit. And also I'm going to set its constraints to right and bottom because no matter how big this card gets, I want to make sure that this illustration stays at the bottom right corner. All right, our card is ready. Now it's time to select this card, duplicate it, hit Ctrl D or Command D and move it right down here. It should be placed right below this card. Now I'm going to rename this top card to top card instead of card. And the bottom one should be renamed to bottom card. We can also change the color of this bottom one so we can easily differentiate them. It's not necessary at this stage, you can change it later on, but I prefer to do it right now so I can easily see the effect. Something like this, you can change the illustration as well, the text, but that's not needed at the moment. All right, now we need to select these two cards and we need to put them inside another frame. But you may ask why? 
because we need to make sure that these cards are responsive and we can adjust their height easily by just changing this value right here, the height value. So I'm gonna select these two, hit Shift and A to add other layout to them. And I'm gonna set the spacing between these two to 32 and I can just name it card. All right, so far so good. Now we need to select the cards inside and we need to change their vertical resizing option to fill container instead of fixed height. But you may ask why? Because as I said, these cards should be responsive. At the moment, if I just select this card and I try to change its height, look what happens. You see, I can scale it up, but nothing happens to the bottom card. That's not what I want. I want this bottom card to shrink when I increase the height of the top card, okay? To do that, we need to select these two cards and we need to set its vertical resizing option to fill container. And now, if I select this top card and I try to modify its height, look what happens. The bottom card shrinks. And that's exactly what I need. Okay, now that everything is ready, we need to select this card frame and we need to turn it into a component, just like this. And now I'm going to create a component set because we are going to use interactive components later on to make these cards interactive. So I'm going to click on this plus button as well, just like this, to create a component set. And I can just select this card component set and enlarge it. And I'm going to move this variant up right here, put it next to it. And we need one more variant as well. So I'm going to duplicate it, hit Ctrl D or Command D. So in total, you need to get three different variants. We have the default one, we have variant two and variant three. So I'm gonna select variant two, and here I'm gonna change this property one value to top. Then I'm gonna select variant three and just change its value to bottom. Now we need to adjust these two variants. So when I hover over this top card, this top card should grow vertically and the bottom card should shrink, right? So here, if I just expand this top variant, inside we have the top card and the bottom card, I'm gonna select the top card and I'm gonna increase its height, just like this. I'm gonna set its height to 600. And also I'm gonna select this paragraph, copy it, and just paste it a few times, just like this. And then I'm gonna select the illustration, hit K to select the scale tool and just scale it up, okay? So I'm gonna set its width to like 320. I can just reposition it as well. And the next thing we need to do is to just select the illustration in the other card and just hide it. Just click on this eye icon here. Okay, so our top variant is ready. Now we need to make the adjustment to the bottom variant as well. So here, I'm gonna select the bottom card and I'm gonna set its height to 600, just like this. Again, I'm gonna just copy this paragraph and paste it a few times. And also, I'm gonna select this illustration, hit K to select the scale tool, and just set the width to 320 to scale it up and you can just reposition it as well. And finally, select the illustration in the other card and just hide it in the layers list. So we have the default, the top and the bottom variants. Now the only thing left is to just make them interactive. We need to create some connections between them. So here in the default variant, I'm gonna select the top card. I'm gonna head over to the prototype tab and I'm just gonna connect it to the top variant, just like this. The trigger is gonna be while hovering, and the animation is gonna be smart animate, and here the easing method is gonna be quick to make it a little bit bouncy. Next, we need to select the bottom card here and just connect it to the bottom variant and just repeat the same thing. The trigger is gonna be while hovering, smart animate, and quick. And we are basically done. So let's give it a try and see whether it works or not. I'm gonna hit A to create a frame, just like this. Then I'm gonna head over to Assets, and here under Local Components, I'm gonna create an instance of this card component. Let's just put it right here. I can duplicate it as well and move it to the right side. You can just select them both and add other layout to them as well but that's not necessary here. I'm gonna select this frame, hit play, and let's see whether everything works or not. Okay, so I'm gonna hover over this card. There we go, it works just fine. So as soon as I hover over this top card, it grows, 
and the bottom card shrinks and when I hover over the bottom card this card grows and the top card shrinks that's exactly what we needed but how can we adjust the content of these cards it's so simple you just need to select a card here for example this bottom one you can modify its color right here you can modify it to whatever color you want just like this and you can change the text the title the description and if you want to change the illustration you can just select it head over to fill just click here and from here you can choose an image from your computer and just like that our interactive card grid is ready you can use it for a gallery for a feature section on a landing page or any other use cases. If you want to learn how to create an advanced scroll animation in Figma, like what you see on Apple's website, make sure to check out this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more design tutorials. Have an amazing day and see you next time.